In this video, we will delve into the detailed anatomy of the trochlear nerve, also known as cranial nerve 4. We will begin our presentation with a comprehensive overview of the trochlear nerve, focusing initially on its origin, course, and its intricate relations with adjacent anatomical structures. Following this, we will delve into the division of the nerve into its terminal branches, highlighting how this division facilitates effective innervation of the superior oblique muscle. Next, we will detail the specific roles of the trochlear nerve in facilitating crucial eye movements. Before concluding, we will explore various clinical correlations associated with the trochlear nerve, focusing on common conditions like trochlear nerve palsy. The trochlear nerve, designated as the fourth paired cranial nerve, plays a crucial role in the motor functioning of the eye. It exclusively innervates the superior oblique muscle, which is responsible for certain movements of the eyeball, including its downward and outward rotation. Notably, the trochlear nerve is distinguished by several characteristics, it is the thinnest among all cranial nerves, and it has the longest intracranial course, which makes it particularly susceptible to damage. This vulnerability can lead to a clinical condition known as trochlear nerve palsy. This condition manifests when the trochlear nerve is impaired, resulting in a specific set of ocular motility disturbances. The trochlear nerve, known for its critical role in eye movement, originates from a specific area in the brain called the trochlear nucleus. This nucleus is strategically located within the periaquectal gray matter, an area that encircles the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius, a narrow channel found in the midbrain. The positioning of the trochlear nucleus is noteworthy as it is set at the level of the inferior colliculus, a landmark structure in the midbrain that is involved in auditory processing. From its origin, the trochlear nerve takes a distinctive path, it uniquely emerges on the dorsal surface of the brainstem, which is the back part of the brainstem. This emergence is specifically lateral to the frenulum of the superior medullary velum, a thin layer of white matter that contributes to the fourth ventricle's roof. This unique dorsal emergence and the long intracranial path it takes to reach the eye muscles make the trochlear nerve distinct among the cranial nerves. Its journey and location are crucial for its function, but they also contribute to its vulnerability to injury, impacting eye movement control. The trochlear nerve has a complex and intricately organized path, divided into four main portions. In the intraparenchymal portion, the trochlear nerve fibers embark on a distinctive journey within the midbrain. They initially course posterior inferiorly, wrapping around the cerebral aqueduct. This path is significant as the fibers undergo decussation, or crossing over, within the superior medullary velum of the midbrain. This crossing over is a unique feature where the nerve fibers switch sides, meaning that they exit the brainstem on the contralateral, opposite, side from their nucleus of origin. This decussation is critical for the nerve's function in controlling eye movements. The fibers emerge on the dorsal surface of the midbrain, just below the inferior colliculus, marking the transition to the cisternal portion. The cisternal portion begins as the nerve fibers emerge from the brainstem. Here, they navigate through the subarachnoid space, specifically within the ambient cistern, as they wrap ventrally around the cerebral peduncles. The nerve then continues its journey anteriorly, skirting the lateral aspect of the pons. During this path, the trochlear nerve is strategically positioned between two major arteries, the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior cerebral artery. This location is crucial, as it lies lateral to the oculomotor nerve, another vital cranial nerve. The trochlear nerve's journey culminates as it pierces the dura mater at the inferior margin of the tentorium cerebelli, a critical juncture where it enters the cavernous sinus. In the cavernous sinus portion of its journey, the trochlear nerve maintains a specific and intricate relationship with other cranial nerves and vital structures, highlighting its crucial role in ocular function. Within the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, a venous channel located at the base of the skull, the trochlear nerve is meticulously positioned in relation to several key cranial nerves. Initially, the trochlear nerve is found below the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3, which is another important nerve involved in eye movement and eyelid control. This positioning is significant as it places the trochlear nerve above both the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6, which controls the lateral rectus muscle of the eye, and the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, responsible for sensory innovation in the region. As the trochlear nerve exits the cavernous sinus, it undergoes a notable transition. It crosses over the oculomotor nerve, shifting to a position superior to it. This movement is critical for the nerve's path towards its destination, the superior oblique muscle of the eye.
the precise anatomical positioning of the trochlear nerve, especially in relation to the oculomotor nerve, is essential for the harmonious movement of the eyes. Adjacent to the trochlear nerve, medially within the cavernous sinus, lies the internal carotid artery. The proximity of the trochlear nerve to the internal carotid artery is significant, as it underscores the vulnerability of the nerve to vascular disorders or any pathology affecting the internal carotid artery. In the orbital and final portion of its journey, the trochlear nerve exhibits a crucial and meticulously orchestrated path. Upon entering the orbit, the trochlear nerve passes through the superior orbital fissure. This is a significant passage point as it is a narrow, slit-like opening that provides a conduit for several nerves and vessels entering the orbit. Once inside the orbit, the trochlear nerve is positioned externally to the common tendinous ring, also known as the annulus of sin. This ring is a crucial anchoring structure for the extraocular muscles. The nerve's position outside of this ring is important because it allows it to bypass the cluster of nerves and muscles that pass through the ring. This strategic placement is essential for the trochlear nerve to reach its target muscle without interference. The trochlear nerve then continues its journey, crossing medially over the levator palpebri superioris muscle. This crossing is significant because it allows the trochlear nerve to reach its final destination, the superior oblique muscle. The superior oblique muscle plays a vital role in controlling the eye's movements, particularly in turning the eye downward and outward. The innervation of this muscle by the trochlear nerve is crucial for coordinated eye movements, and any disruption in this pathway can lead to ocular motility disorders. As the trochlear nerve approaches its target, it typically divides into three or four terminal branches. This division is not merely a structural detail but a critical aspect of its function, as it allows for a comprehensive and effective innervation of the superior oblique muscle. These terminal branches of the trochlear nerve specifically penetrate the ocular surface of the superior oblique muscle. This orientation of the branches is strategic, as it facilitates direct stimulation of the muscle fibers responsible for precise eye movements. The distribution of the nerve branches across the muscle enhances the trochlear nerve's ability to uniformly innervate the superior oblique muscle. This distributed innervation is key for achieving a balanced and coordinated control over the muscle's contractions. Regarding the function of the trochlear nerve, this nerve plays a pivotal role in controlling three specific types of eye movements, depression, abduction, and intorsion. Depression of the eye the trochlear nerve enables the downward movement of the eye, a motion known as depression. This action is vital for tasks that require downward gaze, such as reading or walking downstairs. Abduction of the eye, abduction refers to the movement of the eye away from the nose, a lateral motion that is essential for peripheral vision and for coordinating both eyes to work together for a broad field of view. The trochlear nerve's influence on the superior oblique muscle contributes to this lateral movement, enabling the eyes to track moving objects effectively or shift gaze between different points of interest. An intorsion of the eye. Intorsion is a rotational movement where the top part of the eye turns towards the nose. This subtle but important motion is critical for maintaining binocular vision, especially when the head is tilted or during angular movements of the head. The trochlear nerve's control over the superior oblique muscle facilitates intorsion, ensuring that the orientation of the visual field remains stable and consistent, regardless of head position. In summary, the trochlear nerve's function is integral to these three aspects of eye movement, each playing a vital role in our visual experience. The precise control over the superior oblique muscle allows for the accurate and coordinated movements necessary for complex visual tasks, depth perception, and navigation of our environment. Turning to the clinical correlations of the trochlear nerve, our focus will shift to trochlear nerve palsy, a clinical condition that arises from the dysfunction of the trochlear nerve, leading to a set of characteristic symptoms and challenges in eye movements. This condition is significant due to the trochlear nerve's role in innervating the superior oblique muscle, which controls specific eye movements. Vertical or torsional diplopia, one of the most common symptoms of trochlear nerve palsy is diplopia, which is double vision. In this context, the diplopia is typically vertical or torsional, meaning that the patient sees two images that are misaligned either vertically or rotationally. This form of diplopia is binocular, occurring due to the misalignment of the eyes when both are open. Hypertropia of the paretic eye, patients with trochlear nerve palsy often exhibit hypertropia, where the affected, paretic, eye is positioned higher than the normal eye. 
This is frequently described as a pathetic gaze due to the upward deviation of the eye, which results from the inability to properly control the superior oblique muscle. An abnormal head posture, torticollis to compensate for the visual disturbance caused by diplopia, patients often adopt an abnormal head posture. This can include a head tilt and a face turned to the opposite side of the affected eye. This adjustment helps to align the images seen by each eye, reducing the double vision. The diagnosis of trochlear nerve palsy is primarily clinical, based on the patient's symptoms and physical examination findings. A detailed clinical evaluation is crucial for an accurate diagnosis, as the symptoms can closely resemble other ocular motility disorders. The causes of trochlear nerve palsy are diverse and can include trauma, which can stretch or damage the nerve, vascular disorders, which might affect blood supply to the nerve, congenital issues, which can present at birth, or neoplastic conditions, where tumors exert pressure on the nerve. The variation in potential causes necessitates a thorough examination and sometimes imaging studies to identify the underlying etiology. In summary, trochlear nerve palsy presents a unique set of challenges in ocular motility, requiring careful clinical assessment and management. The condition significantly impacts the quality of life due to the resulting visual disturbances. In conclusion, the trochlear nerve, designated as cranial nerve 4, holds a distinctive place in the human nervous system due to its specialized functions and unique anatomical features. As a motor nerve, its primary role is innervating the superior oblique muscle of the eye, a muscle crucial for executing certain eye movements like downward and outward gaze. This specific function is integral to complex visual tasks and maintaining binocular vision. In terms of its physical characteristics, the trochlear nerve stands out as the smallest of all cranial nerves. Another remarkable feature of the trochlear nerve is its exit from the brainstem. It is the only cranial nerve that emerges dorsally from the brainstem, specifically from the midbrain, which sets it apart from other cranial nerves that typically emerge from the sides or the ventral surface. A unique aspect of the trochlear nerve's anatomy is the complete decussation of its axons within the brainstem. This means that the nerve fibers cross over to the opposite side from their origin. This crossing over is essential for the nerve's function, as it allows each trochlear nerve to control the muscle on the opposite side of its nucleus, facilitating coordinated and balanced eye movements. The extended length of the trochlear nerve is another notable feature. This length, combined with its path through various structures, renders it susceptible to injury. Factors such as head trauma, intracranial pressure variations, and certain medical conditions can lead to damage along its course, affecting its function. Trochlear nerve palsy is a common manifestation of such injuries or dysfunctions. This condition significantly impacts the movement of the eye, leading to symptoms like double vision, difficulty in reading or navigating stairs, and abnormal head postures. Trochlear nerve palsy is a frequent concern in ophthalmology clinics where patients seek treatment for the visual disturbances it causes.